Dairy farming is a venture that can be done by literally anyone so long as you have resources. Dairy farming is very lucrative and it pays better than white collar jobs. Engineers, doctors have left their stable jobs to undertake dairy farming. The story of Mr. Raphael Kamemba is such an inspiring story from a stable job to dairy farming. Join me, Victoria Masai, as we learn from Mr. Kamemba's story. So you see what You cut across the layers, you get it down together. You cut it across. But you see, like with the water we have now, we are doing as in a bit. As in a bit more common. The tank will be big and end of June. I love in a road in there. This is Akela Heiva. My name is Rafael Kamemba. I'm a dairy farmer. Uh, where we are here, this is uh, Nyamira County. Okay, the sub county is Nyamira South, and the, the ward is Nyamira uh, Township, Nyamatuta. Um, I'm a dairy farmer, and I've, I've been doing dairy farming uh, since 2014. That's when I started. Uh, I, I started the, the, the farm. Uh, the reason why I started dairy farming is basically, you know, my father used to be a dairy farmer. And uh, we grew up, you know, we were given the cows to one the grace. And I developed that love for the cows. So in my, my retirement plan was that I retire doing dairy farming. And that's where I actually started the farm before I retired, 2014. I actually took early retirement in 2016 from my place of work. I'd worked for Chemil Shua Kamban for a total of uh, four years. We started with uh, quite a number of uh, animals. We, we, we bought nine uh, great cows from Kiambu. At that time, 2014, I'd actually changed my employment from uh, pension level to contractual. So the money I got from the, the pension part is what I teamed up with uh, my other family, my, my wife, my son. Then we started the farm, the nine cows, we put up the structures, we bought the animals, and then we started the farm. But then I realized the time we were working, I used to come home occasionally during the weekend to mount how the farm is running, but we realized things are not doing, doing well. Because with the workers, you leave them here, you go away for the whole week, you come back after one week, you find things are not running well. In fact, that is one decision why we, we had to come home early because we realized if we don't do that, then at one time, by the time maybe we reach 60 and we want to come home to run the farm, the farm will not be there. So that's why we, we, we came home. And uh, since that time, the animals are multiplied. The cows we bought, there was a challenge because of uh, the fact that I had no idea about uh, dairy farming. Actually, I was doing uh, what we don't know. And you know, we will not even afford to employ an expert in the farm. So we were just running it with the knowledge, we'll read books here and there. And uh, we had some successes, some failures, but the farm actually increased uh, from the cows we started with. Uh, by the year 20, 2020, we had about 27 animals in the farm from the original. That is shortly, in fact, that was about a period of, uh, of only six years from the time we started. Like basically the farm here, what we do is dairy farming, we are just producing milk. So at the moment we have about uh, 20 animals and we are striving to do a lot of uh, improvement in the breeds. A number of the animals now have become pedigree because from the time we put them, we have had almost a, a fourth generation of animals in the farm. The stages of animals, when you are at pedigree, fourth stage, from the cow you bought, you didn't know the history. You have the stages until you reach uh, there is the foundation, the cow you start with, there is the immediate, the appendix, and then the bed. So some of the cows we have now, they are actually pedigrees in the farm. Basically, what we are doing here, this is a zero grazing farm. There is no, the animals are confined in the, in the unit, and we have to basically get all the food from outside feed them. Now, the major fodder we have is, is Napier. 
there is a new variety of Napier that that came. In fact, we got it in Yamiraya. I think I was among the first farms that got it. It's called Super Napier. That is Napier that was developed in Thailand and it came to Kenya, I think, around 2020. Uh, we got ours here, 2021. And this is a, it's actually Super Napier in the sense that the normal Napier has a crude protein content of about 8%. But this Super Napier protein content here is between 16 and 18. More than double our normal Napier. The growth rate is uh, actually uh, twice. So you can see you, you, are, get, you are gaining twice in a, in a very big way. The growth rate is, is double because this Super Napier, after you cut it, six weeks, you are ready for another cutting. The normal Napier, it takes three months. So you see, it's, it's actually a Super Napier. We are developing it. A number of farmers have bought it from here and the people are developing in various places. And I think this will be a, a game changer in, the, in terms of fodder. Napier, we, 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 we have part of the shamba where the farm is now, our shamba here, we have Napier, which we use to feed the animals. But that Napier is not enough, so we have to supplement by getting Napier from other, other farms. We have leased out some farms that we get Napier to supplement what we have. We have even to buy from other farmers, the farmers around who just plant Napier to sell, we buy from them. We buy hay from uh, various places, we get our hay from Nakuru, Narok, but hay has also its challenges. In most of the hay we are, we are given is either of a mature, meaning that the protein content is not very good, so they don't give us good results. We have a corporate with Nyamira here, called Nyamira Bear Urban. Uh, corporate society, it is dairy for the farmers. Uh, I'm currently the vice chairman of Nyamira Bear Urban. What we have tried to do is to, to put farmers together. Like instead of buying something like hay from the middlemen, we arrange our own hay like from Nakuru, Narok, wherever we just arrange. We go directly to the farmers, we purchase our hay, we hire a lorry. We bring it to the cooperative, then we give the farmers who, who will buy it at a, a much cheaper price than what we would have gotten from the, from the middle. Now, another area I think in this farm where we have uh, gone far, for a long time I've, we have not been buying dairy milk, the concentrate, which is very, very critical in uh, milk production. We actually make ours from the raw materials in the farm here. And the quality we make is, is, is very high quality. In this farm, we also make silage. Silage, we normally, we have chambers where we have leased, we plant maize. When it is ready for making silage, before the, the milk is completely dry from the grains, we bring, cut it, chop it, whole maize, make a silage. But for most of the farms, that's, that's the way forward. Like this farm, we are actually intending to lease big land somewhere where we'll have a lot of silage throughout. The land we are having now is about two acres, which doesn't give us enough silage for the whole year. So we get silage which we use just very little to supplement so that we can move through the year. That's one challenge we have tried to... But currently, because of the much drought we have in the nation, the hay is too expensive. A small bale of about uh, 10 kilos is going for 400 in Yamira here. Even when you try to get the farmers we used to buy from, they don't even have it. So we are, really ne we are left just to feed the cows with the uh, napier and the uh, concentrates, which is the dairy meal we buy. Another challenge we have had in the farm has been water. We dug two boreholes by hand here, but those boreholes, if you think, uh, when the weather is not very good, when there is no rain, it tends to, to get low. But recently, the, the, the Nyamira water system in the town has improved quite a bit, and we got a line from there, which is almost uh, having water most of the time. So that is giving us now, is actually saving us from that challenge. Because without water, it's a dairy farm. It would be a big challenge to run it. That's how that's how we are running the farm. We we are also benefiting from uh, we have a biogas system. The biogas system comes from the dung. We have a digester. From the digester, we get the biogas coming out, and it is uh, like the whole farm from you know where we boil water for washing the utensils, washing the animal when you are milking, where the workers are staying, up to the main house here. We are using the, the biogas, which is a big saving. Because from the usage, I see, I see if we are to buy this normal LPG gas, we will be buying a mutungi after every uh, maybe six days a week. We will be clearing a mutungi because of the usage. But we have a more than excess biogas. Sometimes the boys have to put it on to warm themselves in the evening if the weather is cold. Uh, that's one area we, and you know from the biodigester, the slurry that comes out is very, um, is very rich. In, in, in nitrogen. So that slurry 
fortunately, you know, Kisi land, our land is locked. So from the biodigester, the, the, the knee flows down towards the, where the Napier is. So we divert it to the various fields, depending on where you want to, to do the fertilization. Mainly our milk is sold in, uh, within the township. We take some to the cooperative and uh, we take some to some customers, the hotels, banks. Like at the moment we are supplying about four banks in Yamira, a number of hotels and uh, some other uh, middlemen who buy the milk and also sell it to the, to the, to the people. Now, in terms of other improvements, we have, uh, we have through the cooperative, that's how we are able to actually buy cheaper uh, fodder. We are able to come down together. The, the county government gave us uh, they gave us free nitrogen, which we use for, for preservation of the you know, cement straws. So the cooperative, we have our own uh, uh, cylinders where we keep the nitrogen. So we get cement, imported cement from companies like CREP, this one from Netherlands. We have things like worldwide sires from the US. We have in a cement from Canada. So we get that semen directly from them, they deliver to the cooperative, we store it, and when a farmer needs it, we just uh, give him. So you find that our farmers now are in the cooperative, they, 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 they get the, the semen at a price which is almost a quarter what they would have been charged by the veterinary officers. Dairy is all about feeds. If you want milk, you must have food. So you have to look around and make sure that you have a way you are going to get enough feeds for the animals. If you cannot get enough feeds, or you cannot afford to procure them, which in most cases is very expensive, so you must have actually your, your cheaper source of the feeds that you want to give the animals. And then my advice is, once you, you realize that you can, you have to do some feasibility study definitely, so that you are sure that the farm you have, or the land you will be able to lease, all the, 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 the fodder you will buy will be enough to feed the cows, you want to start. If you want to do dairy, you start small. Start small so that you move up with your animals. You become an expert in your farm with your animals. Because in most cases, like the case we have experienced in this farm, the animals we bought, we bought them from Kiambu. Those cows, you know, this, the, the fellows who sold them, the cows to us, they told us, these cows were rated at 30 liters um, per day. But when we brought them there, we realized we, we, are no, we cannot get at that. But after breeding, and you know, in breeding, you can always improve your breeds. And the animals you breed in the farm, they, they, they get adapted to the environment. So you find there are very good producers. Like here, we don't have any of the original cows we bought. We have culled them out of the farm. The animals that were born from those initial animals we bought are the ones we are here now. We have the daughters, the granddaughters, and the great granddaughters. We are seeing now that production which we, we have never been seeing. Because now at, at least the best cow we are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are producing up to 38. Yet the animals we brought in, we hardly used to get even 25. But majorly the challenge we have as dairy farmers are numerous. First, we don't have serious advice from the government, from the local, you know, our local um, experts. There are officers the government has employed to go around and give farmers advice. But you really see them. And even the way they come to the farm, they are not coming to, to, to add value to the farm. They are coming maybe because they want to make money from the farmer. You know, you find these officers, most of them, are, they also have their own private ways, businesses. Uh, some are actually advision dissemination officers, but they are carrying their own straws. Yamira County started with um, the former governor, the late, the late Nyangrama had started a program where he was actually assisting farmers to have better improvement of their breeds. So he used to get, the, even now the programs there, yeah, they get semen from, from Kabete and then they assist the farmers to try them. So they are not assisting. We have production officers employed by the government on government motorcycles. They move around. They are supposed to advise go to farm to farm, see how the farmers are feeding the animals, advise them, but they don't do it. So those are challenges. But for us now, to survive in your own farm, you must really find a way of getting your own good fat so that he will advise you accordingly. Then you pay him. So fodder is the biggest is challenge. Getting advice from expertise, advice from the, the guys who are supposed to do it is another big challenge. But feeds have become very expensive. Like now, the products for making my dairy meal, we get them from Nakuru price and I'm told, in fact the supplier from Nakuru tells me he gets his, 
things from Uganda or Tanzania. So imagine something travels past Yamira, goes to Nakuru, then comes back from Nakuru to here. Then you put in the transport costs, it comes becomes fairly expensive. And uh, let me assure you, a number of farmers, what they do, things like their meal, they either avoid it or they put, they give the cow belly. Since they can't afford the high yield, they buy the, the cheapest. And from the cheapest, you can't get your production. So it becomes a big challenge. Another major challenge we normally get in the farm is to, 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 to retain wood workers, or actually to get good workers, both skilled and unskilled. Most of the workers, who, who work in dairy farms at the lower level is like some of them are having drunkards. So because of their low education, they, then they have challenges. They don't value the work because you know normally I've realized that with the workforce, the lower people are in the cadres in the work, the more they don't value their job. When somebody moves up, maybe you care. So we get workers. The turnout is is fairly high. Okay, for our farm, what is interesting is that the turnout is not that the, the, we get new people. Old people go, and then we get the old, the other old people who left. They actually come back looking for the job. So you find like we have been having about six six workers who have been rotating. We are Kichoka Nanda, his his friend who left comes back like that, like that. It's a big challenge, but uh, we are trying to get over it uh, by improving their salaries and their terms. Like our workers here now, we have put them on NSSF. They want them to join NH NHIF, so they're trying to see if we can improve their terms, that they can stay for, for a longer period. Because with the cows, by the way, the cows are like babies. If you have cows and you keep on changing the, the, the workers, it is like a mama having a baby and you are changing mates every day. It becomes expensive. Even to the cows, actually, they are not comfortable. And, and what I've realized about cows, cows are animals that want continuity. Like even with the feeds, if you are... If you are able to feed your cows with a particular food which is available, make it consistent and you'll get production. And maybe what I should advise people who are starting dairy farming, uh, you should not start with so many animals. Actually, the best way to start dairy farming, start with just a few animals. If you are, you know, you are just fresh, you don't know much about animals and you are just starting from nowhere. So it's good to start with a few animals so that you can be able to manage them and they grow. You will grow the farm by breeding your own animals and you see them come up. As you get experience, the number will come up and then you, you have an experience that can manage the, the number of animals you have.